So the State Department will honor five U.S. companies today, which it says are playing a, quote, crucial role in elevating global standards of business conduct. Among them is Google, which is being honored in the women's economic security category for its work to support women's tech initiatives in Poland and across Eastern Europe. And joining us now is Google's Director for Central and Eastern Europe and Transatlantic Public Policy, Marta Poslad, and I think I know this person. <laughs> I don't guy? know. The United States Ambassador to Poland, Mark Brzezinski. Dzień dobry, Marek. Uh, Dzień dobry, Mika. Dzień <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll bow out of this one. Jonathan Lemaire, you have the first question. Mr. Ambassador, good to see you. I don't know how you got by security. Um, we, <laughs> wanted to, you, we do want to ask you uh, about a number of pressing world affairs issues right uh, in a moment. But first, let's just talk a little bit about this award summary. Tell me what it means uh, mm -hmm. and, and talk to us about why Google and others are being honored. Well, Jonathan, you know, this award falls under the rubric that a collective response is the most effective response. It is important for the private sector to be involved in America's challenges and advancing our values abroad. And that is what Google Polska, which is what we call it in Poland, or Google Poland, has been doing in Poland. It has been helping Ukrainian women who are refugees in Poland develop skills to re-engage their professional lives. They have generously embraced the refugee community in Poland, which, which amounts to millions of people embraced by that country to help them get a new start. That's the kind of thing that Secretary of State Blinken is celebrating today with the Award for Corporate Excellence. And frankly, it is a model of, that is being a, um, advanced by so many companies, American and Polish, in Poland, whether it's Uber, Amazon, Hilton Hotels, or even like a small group of truckers in Radom, Poland, or a group of nurses in Poznan, Poland, doing all they can to help people who can't help themselves. M Marta, could you give us um, any of the individual stories, of, particularly of the women, because most of the refugees who came across were women and children. I think it was something like 15 million have crossed from Ukraine uh, through Poland. Give us a couple of the individual stories of the women that you've been helping at Google. And is this a model that could be used to help refugees in other areas of the world? Thank you so much for having me on the show and giving me the opportunity to tell you about uh, these stories. Indeed, executing uh, projects and campaigns gets very challenging at the time of war and Poland over the past 20 years has become that shelter for many brave Ukrainian women who were left with no choice but to leave their homes and look for new life very often um, in Poland and they took advantage of a number of programs Google offer. We are very humbled to see 2,500 Ukrainian women take on our scholarships and pursue Google career certificates that increase their qualifications and help them find themselves uh, in a completely new job market to them. We also launched a Ukraine support fund where half of startups that we supported were female funded. And these are the stories of great women like, like Lydia Turpo, um, a co-founder of Skyworker.ai platform that connects IT talent in Ukraine with global companies that offer their remote work. Another great example is Maria Smerechuk, who runs Mindly, and this is a platform that connects people in need with licensed therapists. Thanks to the scale-up that Google provided, this, this platform can serve millions of people globally today. Uh, Ambassador Brzezinski, th this is David Ignatius in Washington. You had a startling election result uh, in Poland this month where uh, a center-left coalition led by Donald Tusk defeated the ruling uh, right-wing group of parties. Tell us about the significance of that for Poland, but more broadly for, for Europe. This seemed like a big deal. Sure. And also more broadly significant for America. What happened on October 15th was a democratic mobilization of the people to express their voice through their vote. It was the highest turnout in terms of voters in modern Polish history. And Donald Tusk, a former president of the European Council, won his coalition won. And the strategic opportunity that you point to, David, is clear. In a creation of a new government, Poland could renew its ties with the European Union, with Germany, and even with Ukraine 
in one single act because ties between Poland and those countries have become uh, prickly recently. And so it is a real strategic opportunity also for America. You know, David, we have thousands of American soldiers in Poland today. Collective security is working, but one of the weak links was the relationship between Poland and the European Union and Poland and its European neighbors. And now we can, that can be strengthened. Mark, it's uh, Richard Haas here. We're ending uh, the second fighting season of the war. And quite honestly, it looks something close to being a stalemate. Poland yeah. has been on the front lines. You've got millions of uh, refugees. What is your sense about the mood and whether, how would I put it, is patience at all wearing thin? What, it, what as we go, move towards a third year of uh, fighting, what is, wh wh where's the center of, of Polish society and where do you think the new government will come out? Well, Polish society still, a, a, a majority of Poles support embracing the refugees and continuing to support them. But that support is slowly diminishing. But I think President Biden has initiated a really smart strategic move by appointing a special envoy to begin to think about the recovery and rebuilding of Ukraine. That's former Secretary of Commerce Penny Pritzker. Because yes, the war continues, but the strategic opportunity when the Ukrainians win or even before is to begin to rebuild Ukraine so it is as Secretary Blinken put it, so it doesn't just survive but thrives. It's part of Europe's logistics chains, supply chains, part of its tech context. That thinking has already begun, and rebuilding Ukraine will not just be an American problem. It's an international problem, and it's good that Secretary Pritzker is getting in front of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marta Elise Jordan here. Congratulations on your Elise. award and your work to help women reach economic security within their own communities. Could you talk about why these initiatives are so important, specifically in Poland and in the region? Absolutely. Well, I, gender equality remains a struggle, and women's empowerment is something that needs to be nudged along. President Biden has been clear. Three words, America embraces equality. Everyone must be included, and a country is stronger when everyone is included. And there is no catalyst to advance things immediately and quickly like the private sector. And the American private sector footprint, as is being celebrated with Google Polska's award today, has been super proactive about that to the benefit of women and girls all across Poland. And Marta, how have you seen this transformation with the women that you've worked with in Poland? Google has been in Poland for over 17 years and we've always considered it to be a very open entrepreneurial economy with a great deal of talent. We're very excited about the energy and we're looking forward to elevating all the programs to date um, going further. And look, it all starts with our own workplace. Googlers across the world, having been empowered in their own careers, really understand that there is so much more, more we need to do for others. And this award truly speaks to the trade relationship between uh, Poland and the U.S., but also the strategic partnership between the U.S. and Europe. And, you know, sharing common values means that there is so much more we can build together on both sides of the Atlantic and continuously prove to be the world's closest allies. All right. U.S. Ambassador to Poland, Mark Brzezinski. I'm proud of you, Mark. You and it really thank well, you, Mika. What, what's that? I pronounce it well? It's Kuczynski. <laughs> uh, and Google's Director for Central and Eastern Europe and Transatlantic Public Policy, Marta Pozlad. Thank you both uh, for sharing this with us this morning. And